Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. Just a couple days away before Halloween begins, and I'm about to review a horror comedy that came out on September 30th, 1988, that features the always sexy and seductive horror movie hostess for late night television, you know, such as the movie Macabre that aired on TV stations everywhere, simply called Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, in her feature film debut of the title role. Yeah. And I always remember watching this uh, ever since I was a kid. I used to tune in on channels like KHJ, you know, Channel 9, which would later become KCAL. And I always have watched some classic uh, B horror movies. Yeah, with Elvira hosting it during the night. Yeah. <laughs> it's always fun because, you know, she was very popular. Let's get right to it. It stars Cassandra Peterson as Elvira with W. Morgan Shepard along with Daniel Green, Susan Kellerman, Edie McClure from films like Carrie, Fairless Wheeler's Day Off, as well as two TV shows, Small Wonder and The Hogan Family. Robert Benedy, Kurt Fuller from films like Ghostbusters 2 and Miracle Mile, Jeff Conaway from the movie based on the musical Grease, along with TV shows like Babylon 5 and Taxi, yeah, who's sadly no longer with us. Yeah, he, he was a great actor. William Duell, Pat Crawford Brown, Ellen Dunning, Era Hyden, and voice actress Tris McNeil. It's written by Cassandra Peterson along with John Paragon and Sam Egon and is directed by James Cinderelli. So let's have our, our pleasant dreams, shall we? The movie begins when a horror movie hostess, Elvira Mistress of the Dark, who's played by Cassandra Peterson, wants up quitting her job after an outburst involving sexual harassment with the new station's owner. But suddenly, she wound up having an opening act in Las Vegas. Only one problem. She needs $50,000. So then she discovers in the will of her late great aunt Morgana that all of a sudden from her possessions she winds up inheriting a mansion as well as a poodle named Algonquin. is isn't what it seems to be. And a book that contains mysterious cooking recipes. Yep. So she winds up going to Falwell, Massachusetts, and she winds up having a, a new life. Yeah, because suddenly her car broke down. And winds up striking a close friendship with the local feeder operator, Bob Redding, who's played by Daniel Green. But a lot of her charms, um, with essentially good nature, also attracts the attention of many towns' teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> A bunch of perverts, of course, but that doesn't matter. Much to the chagrin of their close-minded parents, who sees her as simply a bad influence. But of course, Bob's infatuation with Elvira also infuriates his love interest, Patty, who's played by Susan Kellerman, who happens to be a bowling alley owner, with the help of several members of the school board and the PTA. But that leads to bigger problems when we meet the town's councilwoman named Chancity Pariah, who's played by Edie McClure, along with her school principal and the town's wielder, they both played by Robert Benedy and Kurt Fuller, which apparently, you know, they started uh, remodeling the entire mansion, you know, clean up everything that needs to be set up, and enough for Elvira to actually sell the house. But that, of course, leads to a lot of problems. Anyway, um, she couldn't get a job throughout the entire town. That is until you know she wants up, uh, you know, taking over for Bob Redding's, uh, you know, local theater because they usually play G-rated films. And she wants up doing an act um, during late nights, so they'll, they'll basically have, we'll have a midnight showing of at, at this rate. A, uh, a B-movie classic, <laughs> Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. So then um, 
she winds up doing basically at, at the end of the film to do a parody of the flash dance scene yeah and, and I gotta say that was pretty awesome when she did that but of course um, originally she was gonna be um, covered with a bucket of gold glitter but instead she winds up getting covered with black tar along with fetters yeah by Patty humiliating her throughout the entire crowd yeah. so of course she winds up having a bath filled with uh, super unleaded gasoline <laughs> I know, it's kind of funny when you think about it. So, she tries, of course, to sell the house, but the whole deal gone bad, and then suddenly uh, Elvira's seemingly harmless uncle named Vincent Tebot, who was played by W. Morgan Shepard, who turns out to be, as we speak, a warlock, who has their, their quest to obtain Morgana's secret recipe book, which turned out to be a powerful spilled tomb, yet using him to destroy Elvira and taking over the world. Yeah. He was also responsible for the suspicion of the town's adults and their hatred towards Elvira. Yeah, but that's where the whole thing becomes a complete nightmare for uh, Elvira because now the entire townspeople are actually threatening her to get rid of. So they decided to do uh, their retro role of as we speak, uh, the Salem Witch Trials, where they wound up, uh, you know, tying her up and burning her to the stake. Yeah. But of course, it's up to Elvira to use uh, her ring that Morgana had gave her, enough to actually use the power, so that way she'll, the ring will start, and then she wound up freeing herself and be a able to stop um, Vincent. From taking over and that's pretty much what the film's all about and I had to say it it, it was funny I, I, I really enjoyed this movie I think this was a cult classic I mean come on guys I mean this is a movie about Elvira Mistress of the Dark this is pretty much what you expect I mean considering that she's been hosting all the you know the movie macabres all the time on late night television because I remember um, you know growing up um, back in the the 80s and early 90s and all of that I remember watching Elvira yeah she used to come on uh, during late night television on channel 9 in Los Angeles which is at the time KHJ it would later become KCAL and they still played it then too yeah she was very popular also she was been in several commercials and all those other shows that she's been in I mean yeah, she's, she's always been, you know, one of the best. I know she started out um, s sort of like, um, you know, a homage to the previous uh, horror movie hostess, Vampira, you know, because she was the the original Elvira, as we know it. But I like Elvira, and, and Elvira has always been, you know, a hottie. <laughs> That's all that matters. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite scenes in the film um, was indeed the fast dance scene as we know it. But another scene I also loved too was, was when uh, Elvira was actually using all the uh, the family recipes that, that she found in the book. And she wants up making all of that that's <laughs> by taking all the food ingredients that she found on the cabinet, poured it onto the, uh, the pot. And when she, she was about to make that, that what seems to be a casserole for uh, Bob Redding, suddenly, <laughs> she a after it's done, because <laughs> I know she says, looks like cock-a-doodle. She winds up uh, opening the pot and it reveals a creature. <laughs> and it's going out of control. <laughs> then she winds up putting the creature into the food disposal uh, on, on the sink I mean oh boy th th this was really funny and another funny scene was when you know they started to have the yeah when the townspeople decided to have the variety club picnic and she winds up using the, the family recipes by mixing all the food together along with the, the use of substitute hamburger helper 
and all of a sudden everybody tried out the food sort of as a prank for them yeah as the revenge and and then all of a sudden the entire townspeople ate the entire food and they wound up becoming completely horny so they started doing all these uh, sexy dance moves all the way around <laughs> the club picnic so that was really funny <laughs> yeah I don't know, I, I really love this movie. I, I remember watching this um, as a kid. I remember renting this on VHS too. Yeah, my dad actually rented it for, for us and we watched it. I mean, it was awesome. I mean, it does have a lot of sexual situations involving, you know, Elvira. Yeah, intercourse or boobs, <laughs> as we know it. With that long black hair of hers. Those uh, big uh, eyelash. Um, white makeup, you know, long black dress, and of course, her luscious cleavage showing her big boobs. <laughs> Man, it just makes a lot of guys completely horny. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, and, and she's looking mighty fine even in her 60s, too. I mean, hard to believe. She's still looking hot. I, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, but you know it's funny because um, underneath all that uh, costume that she had, she's also pretty hot um, without the makeup and all of that. And she's a redhead too. It's like if you saw her in person, you know, without wearing the Avira costume, she looks exactly like you know a normal person. And she's God, she's still beautiful. And yeah, they, they had a lot of great special effects, too. I mean, surprisingly good special effects from its time in 1988. I mean, with, yeah, and, and I had to say, there was some, um, there was some gore in it. I mean, considering it's PG-13 rating, I mean, there was some completely dark scenes, you know, involving the warlock um, named Vincent, who was played by, of course, W. Morgan Shepard. He was very good in this movie, by the way, you know, playing the warlock. And one of the most memorable scenes, of course, too, was when Arara was about to stop him, or, or this way she was about to be chased around by, by him, of course. She was actually dressed up like Rambo, you know, trying to stop him. But, of course, it was no use. And, of course, the dog, um, Gonk, or, or Gogwin, and yeah, once up uh, transforming into um, certainly two creatures, of course, you know, it transforms into a mice, you know, trying to help uh, a river by actually getting the book, which happens to be stolen by these two uh, greaser guys, including uh, Jeff Conaway, sort of playing um, a different version of of the character in Greece, but only this time he's more of a jerk in this one. And not to mention, uh, Gonk also, uh, you know, wants up transforming into uh, into a, a Doberman. So that that was also interesting. And trying to help um, Bob, who has already been tied up. And yeah, and of course, you know, we had to see a lot of scenes with her, you know, you know, dressed up, and a lot of teenagers were going wild. They're about to take a picture of. Of a barber, you know, naked while she was already dressed up to go to bed at her, uh, you know, local mansion that she inherited, you know, which they had to remodel together, and they are trying to be find a better way to sell the home. You know. Yeah. But it, it's fun. I, I love this movie. They also had a sequel called Avira Haunted Hills. I haven't seen that one. I should definitely check it out. I mean, it, it would be fun. But I love this movie, you know, I I wish this movie um, didn't get nominated for Ratsies, which is ridiculous too, I mean, I thought she was awesome, you know, Cassandra Peterson, who wrote the screenplay, because let's face it, she she's as hot as ever, but she didn't deserve, you know, a Ratsy, that, that's bullshit to me, and 
Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 47%, which I'm, I swear to God, it deserves to be a little higher than that. Maybe a 65 or so. I mean, I know a little low, but certainly better than, than 47. Even IMDb had it for 6.3, although I think they'll start changing it rapidly like they always do. But I think it'll go a little higher. Who knows? Certainly better than that. But either way, it's a fun movie. Recommended for everybody who loves Elvira. And I know I do, too. Yeah. So check it out. Um, so anyway, I give Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.